And welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon. Today, I am talking with Chase Friedman. Chase, thank you for spending some time with me today, man. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Michael. You are welcome. It's going to be a really fun conversation because Chase is, um, I think we're brothers from a different mother. I don't know, but he mm -hmm. loves branding and business growth and profit as much as I do. And we're going to dive into a lot of that. So if um, if you're thinking about needing to figure out how in the world to craft your message, your brand, so you are distinct and it resonates with your audience and how to parlay that into a profit, you need to hang around. So Chase, tell me as we get into this, this conversation, how in the world did you get to doing what you do today? Yeah, so a little secret, did not start in branding or marketing. Um, I don't know who many okay. that <laughs> I do not have that traditional background. I actually, uh, I'm a storyteller at heart. Um, I began my career in, in, in entertainment and film and television and making wow. movies and commercials and music videos and TV. And that's what I love to do. Um, and, and, you know, of course, that is telling stories. But for me, it quickly became, it's all an opportunity to close the gap between you can make something beautiful, you can make it tell a compelling story. But if you're not reaching audiences in the right way, that can all fall flat. Absolutely. So really transitioned and began consulting with brands and, and entrepreneurs and leaders and influencers on helping them craft their message, their unique position, their unique identity, their unique story. And of course, how do we get it out there? How do we serve it? How do we connect and inspire people? Um, you know, through the digital marketing sort of landscape. Um, and that's kind of what led me to, you know, create Vanquish Media Group, which is um, all about empowering people to develop, define their unique story um, and share it with the world. And of course, you know, my mantra is once you do that, let's let's help you do good and do well. I do believe that profit and purpose are not mutually exclu exclusive in today's uh, landscape. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, and so many times you really need the profit to drive the purpose, right? I'm, I'm a big purpose driven guy. Uh -huh. And in order to achieve my goals and to do what I want to do in life, I need a profit. I need the money to be able to do that. You do. You bring these two together. And I love what you were saying about your unique position, identity, story, that's all the all branding. I want to dive in pretty quickly around this idea, this concept around brand being this identity position versus yeah. um, a, a palette of colors or a certain Amen. logo. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, a lot of people think, you know, my brand is my logo or my colors or my website. No, it's 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 far from that. Sure, those are included. A brand is 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 it's intangible. It's the culmination of experiences, personality, vibe, essence of what you are as a person or a business in the minds of your audiences, right? Absolutely. Brand is a brand really is more of is more human than a lot of people treat it. It's a personality. What is that unique voice, that unique story? Um, and yes, obviously the visual identity matters as well. But there's so many nuances to it. And, and I see I see companies every single day try to get to market, to grow, to scale, to profit by throwing money at social media and paid media and email marketing and all these different tactics when they don't have their core in place. They don't know exactly who they are, yes. why they exist and what they believe, you know, yeah. um, and, and how really truly they're going to be serving their clients. Yeah. And, and that's so important because when you do that and you do it well, it actually attracts that's your right. tribe, right? That's right. That's and right. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know about you, Chase, but we are a big Mac family and a big mm -hmm. Mac company. That says and a lot about you. I know your archetype now. <laughs> there you go. Right. It, and it's because of what a Mac is, how Steve Jobs yeah. positioned it, all the marketing they've done. And it it has a voice of its own. Is is that yes. what you find when you create this, this story behind your clients? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it is far beyond mere features, even benefits. Yeah. Um, you, you, you know, people and 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 price, quite frankly. You know, back in the early days of advertising, yeah, they would market around look at these beautiful features. And then we evolved into how it benefits you. Brand is really more of a reflection of you and your identity and your values, right? And Apple is a great example. They've created a, dare I say, cult or culture and tribe around who they are and why they exist, right? They start with why, what we believe. It's kind of a little bit of that rebel mentality, that innovator mentality. Um, but, you know, they don't have 
the technical specs, they aren't blowing their competitors out of the water. That's not why people buy Apple products. They don't stand in line because it's got the most megapixels. Um, it's the experience of what it, what it says about me as a consumer. Yeah. And, and I think that's it's that identification with them. I mean, a rare is the day, dude. And, and it's funny because on my car, I've got two stickers. No, three. I've got an Apple sticker, right? Okay. A little Apple. I've got one from my church. And I've got one, I think, from uh, Life Proof because I carry life my phone in a Life Proof. I am fans of those three things. And I'm, yeah. I want the world to know that I identify with those brands. And you're an ambassador. And that's what's wonderful. When you are a, establish a strong brand, not a whole lot more do you need to market and push yourself out there. Your stakeholders, your consumers, certainly like yourself, but also your internal stakeholders. If they are in alignment with what you believe, what you stand for, they will be your frontline ambassadors day in, day out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it can happen on, on big businesses. I mean, obviously, Apple's spent a couple thousand dollars on marketing, right? <laughs> not, like not, ev not everybody has that. But I look at even you know, Chick-fil-A uh, and I look at local mom and pop companies yeah. that I resonate with, that I am an ambassador because I love the food. I love the experience. I love the atmosphere. That's yeah. where I'm going to go. How do, how do business owners start down this process or maybe before that? What are they struggling with? Are they do they find themselves as like a commodity and they're trying to 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 break in or what's going on in their heart? That's a mind? great question. Yeah, and and look, we've worked with Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies. My you know my preference, my you know who we work with today, and what I love working with is is really small to medium sized businesses, right? Okay. And I I I do believe that they are more equipped and agile and nimble to adapt and pivot to these times. What a lot of them are struggling with is having not having a clarified message. Right. That's it. I mean, yeah. really not having a clear and consistent message that resonates with their audience. I don't care if you're running a coffee shop or you're selling shoes or you're doing whatever it is. Um, what do you believe? What do you stand for? Why you exist? You know, ideally, you know, beyond the bottom line. Yeah. How you're uniquely positioned to do to serve. Um, and then and then finally, what you do. Right. But all that's yeah. around purpose. Right. And yeah. local business owners, small business owners. They've got passion in spades, right? Yeah. A lot of them have purpose. They might not articulate and communicate it clearly. What, what also they're lacking is clarity, right? It's, it, they get inundated by all the competition and think that they have to just be a copycat. Not the case. Own who you are and why you are unique in this space. Yeah, and, th and that is so good. And it's, it's so hard to do that yourself. Yeah. Now, we, we've been doing what we do for well, since 2013, and it took me years to come up with our message, our unique brand and everything. And I'm a marketing guy. Exactly. But I've got three marketing coaches that look at my business. Let's yeah. talk about the struggles there. And, and how do you work with somebody who's got a great business? They just need the brand. Well, I, I suffer from the same thing. I mean, we're a little bit of that barefoot cobbler you know, mentality. We're great at doing for others, but not for ourselves. Um, I think it does take some objectivity. A lot of people are very close to you know, and precious with who they are and what they've built so far, having an outside eye, an objective expert eye come in, but also a trusted partner, right? Someone who you are willing to be vulnerable with. And, Absolutely. you know, as I say, sometimes you got to kill your darlings, you know, just because you love it, you will love the way it looks. And I love my logo and it's amazing for me. Well, let's, let's think about your audience and your clients and who you're serving. Is that the right, is that the right message for them? Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of the story brand um, model, you know, Don Miller, and I'm a yeah, story yeah, brand yeah. guy. And, you know, this is this is the architecture for any storytelling throughout history, right? There's nothing new here, but you always start with the hero of the journey, the character. Right. And what pe people get wrong, the business in your brand, that is not the hero. Absolutely. The hero is who you are serving, your customer, right? You come later as the guide. But you got to look at them first and foremost and understand who they are, what they are looking for and seeking, what their values are, and then ideally align one another. Yeah. And it's, it's man, you, you can't imagine how many times you just echoed what I tell my audience all the time with clear and compelling a message. But it is it's getting into the mind of your audience and, and really engaging with the this the dialogue that's happening in their mind. Yeah. And every time we we gain a client, I'm always wanting to know their story, their background, their hobbies, their all of that because that plays into who you are. Here, here's one of my marketing platitudes, I guess. People will buy who you are, 
more than what you do. Absolutely. And and business owners, I find, aren't transparent enough with who they are. They're like, well, that's not professional if I tell them that I go rocks rock climbing. It's like, no, 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 no. That's exactly that what you need. Personality that aligns you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. This is about, you know, this is also, you know, brand archetypes, which have existed. This is kind of the psychology of, of human nature, right? You know, you can be classified. There's 12 kind of key brand archetypes, you know, rebel, innovator, magician, lover, etc. You know, each of us fall into some degree of that archetypal mix. And that says a lot about, you know, what we love, what we believe, what we want, what we desire. And, you know, can you imagine you're looking at 10 products on a shelf, they all look and feel like they all say the same thing, the same benefits. What's going to set somebody apart? The one who's ideally a little bit more disruptive and disruptive being authentic, showing their purpose and who they are. Um, and look, the data doesn't lie. You know, we're in this age where we've shifted from a shareholder driven capitalism sort of, you know, reality to stakeholder driven capitalism, more information in the hands of consumers that are demanding brands stand up for you know, what they believe in and align with their values. A commitment to this brand purpose, being authentic and consistent, drives business growth. Absolutely. So you can have your cake and eat it too, right? Uh, yeah, without question. And, and the cool thing is, is when you do that and you do it well, you do create those ambassadors yes. because the old saying, what birds of a flat feather flock together. That's right. You start attracting people. They have friends and neighbors and relatives and church members that are just like them who are searching for a, a group, an, an area, an entity yeah. who can help them in whether you're a car dealer, a financial advisor, or a, a, a software company, doesn't matter. We're looking for people that we can connect with and, and, and who have the same heartbeat as I do. Is that That's right. fair? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, people are three to four times more likely to purchase and buy from a purpose-driven brand as we consider it, right? They're gonna, they will pay more in terms of margin, pay a price premium for those purpose-driven brands that they align with. So we're talking margin market share, you know, the best talent out there today, you know, you know, whether millennials and soon to come Gen Z dominating the market and something between 85 and almost 90% of the workforce in the next few years, they want to work for organizations and brands that align with their values. So recruitment, retention, reducing employee turnover, people want to buy from, work for, and even invest in these sorts of organizations. Dude, yeah. And, and you just hit something that is really, really critical for business owners today and in the near future is employee acquisition and, re and retention. Yeah. And they're not working for the almighty dollar. They're working for the brand, the experience that I'm on board with our mission is, are you finding that as well? Absolutely. hundred percent. I mean, you know, we've been through this, you know, the whole great resignation and quiet quitting. And I think that was a big signal to large companies that, you know, you have to develop a, tr a truer sense of what you believe, what you stand for, value align with your consumers. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean checking a box and putting it on a wall and say, here's our mission statement. A lot of people just are checking boxes today, right? But you've seen a, you've seen a movement where people need something more than just, you know, the paycheck, the dollars and cents. They want to believe in something. They want to feel impassioned by the work they're doing and who they're serving and how. And organizations are kind of, a lot of these bigger brands are kind of the new organized religion in a way, right? We're spending so much of our time working and serving, um, you know, it, it better be aligned on multiple fronts. Yeah, because because I want to give you more than just my time. I I want I want to be an ambassador for the company I work for, right? And I'm hearing it more and more from people I'm talking with in business is how do you build culture in business because that's what's yeah. going to retain people. And I don't think it's rocket science, but I think it goes deeper than just well, here's your paycheck or here's a five percent raise or whatever. It's it's not about that. Well, yeah, people are gonna they're gonna work harder. They're gonna work more. They're gonna be more productive, more innovation. Is, is, is being seen from these sorts of organizations, especially with diversity of thought. Um, yeah, it's a big conduit. And, and look, I truly believe that these are your frontline ambassadors, your employees, your team members. Um, when everyone is bought in and in lockstep with this purpose and this why, what we believe, right? They are going to be advocating for, for you, for the business, for the brand, because they're going to be proud of what they're doing, right? Absolutely. And that starts with the business owner 
creating that brand identity. And let's go back to Apple. I mean, I I, sure. I live, I walk into an Apple store and the people, the way they greet me, the way they take care of me, the technology, the beautiful, pristine Apple store matches their marketing, their messaging, the yeah. computer, right? It's all consistent, which is what you talked about earlier. How do you help a small business owner, right? Mm -hmm. Whether he's a HVAC guy, whether he's an attorney, a financial advisor, where do you start this whole process with them to help them understand it's more than just a brand to go out to the market. It it really is the embodiment of who you are exposed into the marketplace in your business. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it really does distill down to kind of that singular you know, what is your why? What is your purpose statement? Um, you know, why, what do you, ex you know, what do you exist and why do you believe um, in terms of serving others? You know, we, we operate in three phases. The first discovery, getting really clear, developing, defining the message of your brand, right? So that it's consistent because if you go to door to door and each client experience and you're pitching your service as something different, it sounds different each time or your employees don't know how quite to, to position uh, what you do and what you offer. Your website says something else. You know, coherence and clarity is key, right? You got to invite 100%. people into this story and be consistent. Otherwise, you know, you're watching a film. The moment something feels off, a character says something and does something that doesn't feel quite in tone with the script, the audience checks out. They're like, wait, that, that doesn't look familiar. So same thing, creating the consistency and clarity of that message, that identity. And then we get into identity, right? So how do we visually showcase that to our audiences, our consumers, right? Um, whether that's through content and website and design collateral, that also has to echo in lockstep and then getting into growth, right? Then we can pour gas in the fire and expand that wide through social, through influencer, through paid media marketing. But it all starts with, with really a clear and concise understanding of why you exist. Yeah. And that, that's so important because once you get that, then that, that parlays through all of your messaging. It, it almost makes marketing a lot um, simpler, dare I say. Because Absolutely. People tend to overthink it. This is not rocket science. I mean, you're using flowery language or using kind of technical jargon. Just tell me what you do and who you are and what you believe. Um, people, you'd be surprised. You know, they will jump on that bandwagon pretty quickly. Well, they will, because I think, I think people are longing for connection. That's right. And too much marketing speak is not connecting us. And um, I, I'm not, a, I mean, dare I say, dare we even go down this road? <clears throat> um, AI and all the stuff that AI, there is a yeah. place for it. It does some cool things. It's never going to make that connection, that human element. Yeah. It's not going to be able to write in a way that understands your audience. It might help you write something faster, but it's not going to be that connection in that it's not going to be this. There's no soul. There's no soul. There's Thank no supplement. You. There's no supplement for the human soul, the human personality, the human character, right? Yeah. Um, you can get close, but it's it's that whole uncanny valley thing as well, right? Back yes. into movies, you know, yes. you see, you know, this 80 foot Godzilla, right? And, and you see this a lot in visual effects when I was working, you know, there's this race to the uncanny valley where you're suspending belief. Um, but the moment something looks or feels or performs off, whether it's the way it moves or the textures or the skin, of them, you check out immediately. And I think a lot of us are inherently seeing that. We don't know how to articulate it, but when we read copy, when we see things generated by AI, there is a certain fidelity to it, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite pass the sniff, the sniff test and our reptilian brain around, wait a minute, I'm going to let this all the way in. Yeah, very much so. I, and I use the analogy a lot of you go to the beach. And there's the waves that we see, and then there's the current underneath that we don't see, sure. but it's the current that's going to kill you. Yeah. And I, I, I think AI and, and all of that and, and messaging, a lot of times the consistency of your message is that current underneath everything. Indeed. That if you're saying one thing on your ads or your website, but when I talk with your salesperson or you, there's a disconnect. I'm checking out and I'm I'm not going to be mean or rude. I'm just going to say, you know what? That that sounds really good, Chase. You know, I, I need to talk to people. I'm going to talk to you later. Yeah. It only takes a word, a phrase, a sentence, a moment yeah. that is inconsistent or inauthentic with the rest of your story. 
um, for people to tune out. I mean, you, you, you can imagine, I mean, we, we, we've got paralysis by analysis in terms of all the content and shows and movies coming out today, right? You know, I don't know about you, but I'll get, sometimes give 10, 15 seconds to something. And I know out of the gate that this is going to be a good fit for me. Absolutely. Without question. And your audience is doing the same thing as they're searching for you online. Yeah. They're going to Facebook, LinkedIn, your website, and you've got a few seconds to really start engaging them. And sometimes it's your the wording. Sometimes it's the the image. Sometimes it's how you communicate. It, is there consistency and clarity? Do they know, oh, I'm in the right place? Mm -hmm. right. And when That's done well, it's a culmination of all those things. Hence the brand, the identity, right? It, it, it really is. And I love how you use identity because I've, I've believed for a long time brand really is that identity of an organization of, of, of a company, it's yeah. more than just a logo. It, it, it communicates at deeper levels, right? It's, I mean, I believe it's, I believe it's soulful. I believe it's kind of the soul of your business or your brand. And if you can get to that, that depth of level, um, again, not only are, not only is it going to resonate with many more people that I think will find you authentic and connect with you, but it is going to strategically guide you through every decision you make your marketing, your, your growth, your sales, your operations, your product, it's, it infuses everything about you, just like, you know, our soul colors who we are and how we interact. You can't fake that. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And, and it, it keeps you from chasing all those shiny objects because you know who you are and you can be true to your character yeah. of your business, your brand. The challenge is, Chase, uh, for a business owner to try to figure this out is, is nearly impossible because number one they don't have the brain that you have because you're a storyteller that that's a whole different world than legal or marketing or, or fixing computers or whatever it is right so how do you how, how do you help people what's the first step somebody should take as they start thinking you know i, I like what you're saying but i don't know what to do how do how they get i mean yeah, I mean, again, like I said, our model really is in kind of three phases and it's and it's intentional in its sequence, right? Mm -hmm. We've got a graph kind of on our and our collateral where it's basically like climbing a mountain, right? You start at base camp, you get your pack ready, but you got to start the ascent first. You know, the first phase is discovery, you know, being clear, being honest, being intentional with developing and identifying and crystallizing that brand identity, okay? All elements of it, messaging, visual, et cetera. Right. So once we have that in core, it makes everything else so much more seamless and so yeah. much easier. Right. And efficient in how we deploy it. So that's kind of that first phase of the trek. Next, we get into identity. Great. We know exactly who we are. We feel comfortable in that skin. Now, how are we going to showcase that to the world, whether that's through video content, through websites, through design and graphics. Right. The yeah. visual component that helps tell that story, because yeah. we're going to get movie. Great script. Give me the great dialogue, give me the great audio, all those come together. And then finally, you've got that real strong foundation. Let's go to summit, right? Let's grow. Let's now deploy whatever that growth tactic is. And we do many different things, you know, social media, influencer marketing, paid media, email with that singular and concise look and feel and message. And time and time again, it, it just pays so much more dividends, increased profitability, increased ROI, increased margins. Um, so when someone comes to us saying, hey, I need a social media campaign, we're like, oh, let's pump the brakes. What do you really need, right? Absolutely. And what is that really trying to serve? And really audit and assess. Let's go back a few steps, measure twice, cut once, so that when we get there, it's going to blow you out of the water. Yeah, that that's so good. Such a clear, I love the base camp to the summit. I, I think that's so good. And there's so much work to be done there that business owners, you're just not going to do it yourself. You don't know the right questions to ask. And it it takes some thinking, but you, when you have a guide, a Sherpa, dare I say, Sherpa, climbing a mountain, um, how, how it, it makes it simpler and easier because Chase and his team can guide you there. So if you've ever dreamed of being the apple in your to your audience, because you don't have to have a nationwide audience, you might be in Phoenix, Arizona, I don't know, and that's enough. That's your market, Absolutely. but you can be the apple in the eye of your audience. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, I love that. When you, when you understand the right brand, and, and the thing I, I, I also want to pull out here, Chase, is you are not creating brands for companies. You are discovering brands 
because it's what the business owner is bringing to the table. It's who they are because that's what makes it authentic to them. Fair? Absolutely fair. I mean, you know, we've worked with 20 year old companies or lean startups. I mean, and sure. And, and those that are kind of coming from scratch, a good time to get real and honest, not just race to market. You'll have much more lasting success. But the way I look at it is this constellation. You know, you've got to have to run a successful business and to scale and to grow sustainably. You got to have the passion behind what you do. You got to have the purpose for why and what you believe, what you exist. And you've got to have clarity for how you're going to navigate that. A lot of people have passion, maybe some purpose, one or two of those components. Very yeah. few have that sort of trifecta, that constellation. And so we're coming in to help try to kind of connect those dots, see things that you might not see for yourself and make everything that's much more clear and enjoyable and intentional, right? Imagine Absolutely. if your passion is also your business and vice versa. And, and, and once, you, once you get that, not only does your marketing work better, you start generating more profits, you can live life on purpose, but your employees, your team members are on board. It's going to make life so much better because you're going to probably have less turnover, more empowered ambassadors internally, externally. It's, right. just, it's just cool. When, when you do the work and Chase and his team can help you do the work. Chase, I mean, how do, where does somebody go to take that next step to find out more about you, your team, what you do, and, and if they would be a good fit for you? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, first thing, you know, find me on LinkedIn, reach out, send me a message. I'd love to kind of learn more about, you know, who you are, where you're at in this journey, you know, Chase Friedman at LinkedIn, um, and then Vanquish Media Group, which is kind of our, our website, uh, V-A-N-Q-U-I-S-H mediagroup.com. That'll show you you know, our, our why, um, our how, and our, and our what, and our capabilities and impact. Um, but, you know, I, I firmly believe in kind of a, finding that divine right client, right? If there's a will and there's an intention behind what you do, I believe there's a path forward to kind of help bring this purpose and profit to bear for any business at any size. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right. So I'm going to grab all of those and get them in the show notes so that people can connect with you on LinkedIn because that's a really good fun way to start is just a conversation. Absolutely. And and then obviously Vanquish Media Group, that uh, we'll have that domain in the uh, show notes. So if you're out, you know, if you're driving the car or doing whatever right now and you're just not near a computer, I got you covered in the show notes. Go there and find out more about Chase and what he does and how they can help you bring all of this to bear because you know, as well as I do, it's in you. You feel it in your gut. You, you've thought about it. You've seen the other companies. And you're like, I, I can do that. But getting there is so hard. Yeah. Chase and his team, they have, they have the process. They've done it for dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of companies, big and small. Don't let that stop you. Reach out. Chase, thank you, man. This, is, this has been a fun conversation. I love what you do. And um, I, I just hope people reach out to you because it's it makes such a, a difference in any marketing that you do and how you run your company when, when you are solid with your identity and your brand. Well done, brother. Well Amen. done. Thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate it.